agile in an organization. This is the survey again talking about The Scrum Master level people are the people who know little about Agile, but not others. That is the kind of situation that alarming the Agile industry today. The, the Agile community should be really ser be serious about it and make sure that the knowledge is you know, transformed or transferred to all the people who are on the project. Let's look at the Agile Manifesto. This is, a, uh, this is an excerpt, uh, extract in the form of a picture from agilemanifesto.org. I'm not sure how many of us have been through this agilemanifesto.org. Uh, this is a simple no-nonsense site wherein you can find out all the basic information about Agile. Uh, we'll be covering a little about this which is very interesting for our, most of us. Seventeen proponents met together to make this manifesto way back in 2001. We'll be covering the brief of it. Agile manifesto is the philosophy that guides us basically to consider on few things. Let us uh, look at each one of them. First of all, I would like to uh, request you to focus on the last line before we come to any conclusions. The, the intention of the Agile Manifesto is to promote the items on the left hand side but at the same time consider the value involved in the items on the right hand side. That means we are not talking about anything but the word over here. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools working software or comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration or contract negotiation, responding to change or following a plan. We, in Agile we have plans, we have processes, we make excellent documentation. We do collaborate with the customer and ensure that the intent of the contract is best delivered in the interest of both the parties. That is what is Agile we are talking about. Please remember the word over here if you know, most of the time people are interpreting this word over to instead of in lieu of something like that please be aware that it is talking about over okay over means we are going to put people before the processes you can say something like that but not instead of so in agile we have processes very much let's talk about uh, uh, you know little about why this processes and why not. Let's talk about from the bottom up. Following a plan. As we already discussed that plans are our perceptions that the things would work this way basing on the information, facts and other you know uh, material that what we have currently on hand. And we try to follow those plans. Those plans might work for other industries but not for software development. Software development is more of a creative art than, you know, that works for a defined process like, you know, the turnkey project or so. So that's what we are trying to cover here. Let's look at the uh, in detail. Uh, as I was talking about already, it is the people that make the software. So we need to understand that it is the people who identify the scope. It is the people who negotiate on, the, on various things, whether it is the features or you know the, the contracts or whatever we are talking about in terms of the project. And if the people have the right attitude and mindset, they can get the results for us. It is the people who give us the information on the acceptance criteria, for example. So it is the people who follow discipline. That's what that's what the kind of people we are talking about here. That's why we put people before the processes. Whether processes, whether there or not, if, if the person is good, if they have a strong team player, they would be able to deliver. Right? That's what we keep hearing that. Great processes and average uh, people would not guarantee you results. But great people and average processes definitely give you results. 
that's what is the point we are trying to put. It's important that we motivate all the individuals who are working on our projects, help them, you know, intensify the interactions, foster the interactions among them so that, you know, they can understand the needs of the customer and the stakeholders and definitely deliver the best results. It's important that the individuals and interactions is the one that actually makes the software. We might see the tangible code and the designs and other things that what we see in the software at the end of the uh, you know uh, project as a product or uh, you know as a tangible asset but in fact it is the individuals and the interaction that the make and the project that is ultimately making the software that's what we are talking about the communication working software is what the customer is looking for not anything below that okay that is the thing that uh, that is the essence of our duty on the project so when we say that always we remember that you know it is a working software that what we need to make not anything but but in agile we do documentation too what kind of a documentation the documentation like specification by example the documentation like the acceptance criteria in a, in a form that can be easily automatable, in a form that can be easily automatable so that that mundane repetitive job of regression testing kind of a job or unit testing again and again as and when some change is made, we are running these automated tests instead of putting our cream of the brain. Our brains are made best to use elsewhere, not to repeat the same job again and again. We do best documentation in Agile. Uh, so that is what the documentation is. If the documentation is necessary to the customers, we always do the documentation, we always use the process to the extent needed. It does not mean that we would not be doing documentation in Agile. Customer collaboration is important than the terms on the contract and various other things on the contract side. We get to be flexible to cooperate with the customers and their dynamic changing needs. We know the world is changing fast. We see a cell phone every other, uh, uh, you know, every quarter a new cell phone we see. Technology is changing, people's needs are changing, industry is changing. We need to make sure that we cater to those changes to the customer and the intent of the contact is to deliver what the customer wants for the competitive advantage that the customer wants and the business let the customer stay competitive. That is the objective of collaborating with the customer. Everybody on the team in Agile would need to collaborate with the customers like the product owners or product owner representatives, subject matter experts, kind of people, so that we get all the information in time. Within the team, team members do understand this and ask questions to the you know, customer or people. So we are talking about the uh, last uh, value, of, uh, fourth value of Agile. These value statements again are the philosophy we are talking about here. The reality. Change is the reality. We all know that the world is changing. Unless we follow the world, it's very difficult to you know, satisfy the customer. The world of change, I mean. Embrace the change by adapting, you know, various uh, plan. I mean, we, we use uh, adaptive planning or responsive planning in Agile. That way, we reflect and improve constantly. We deliver the intent of the contract using these changes that what we need to make on the projects. Let's look at uh, various. Uh, principles. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous pleases. It is a valuable software that the customer is looking for. If you look at a typical waterfall project, the entire six months, nine months or whatever it is, whatever time it is, we call it work in progress right 
work in progress is nothing but the blocked inventory. It doesn't add any value to anybody, neither the customer nor us. It does not give guarantee the return on investment to the customer, work in progress. Agile delivers fast, early. Right? So, uh, having said that, it is a valuable software that the customer really expects. We do welcome changes even late in development. Agile process harness change to the customer's competitive advantage. You know, we do honor late breaking changes too. So that we guarantee that the customer would get the you know requirements in form of working software that you know even if there is a change, the customer can ask us and we will be doing that on time. We make sure that we you know deliver working software frequently in smaller iterations, I mean smaller time scale from couple of weeks to couple of months with preference to a shorter time scale. Why, why do we need to deliver frequently and what we need to do uh, for delivering frequently? We need to deliver frequently because customers need them for their business advantage. In order for us to deliver frequently, we need to be prepared. For example, like you know, we need to have a continuous delivery in place, continuous integration in place and make sure that we are continuously integrating the software that is tested and readily usable by the customer feature by feature. We complete the whole feature and deliver that in a working software here what we are talking about is a feature in, in its full usable condition. Not just the design documents, not just the plan documents alone. Business people and developers must work together daily during the project. Why? Because we need to get a lot of information from the customers so that we get we make sure that we, we help build the software for the customer. Business, uh, uh, you know, build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and trust in them that to get the job done. This, this principle is guiding us to make sure that we in the work environment in agile industry make sure that we support the teams and trust in them and help them build the software in, with a peaceful mindset. The most efficient method of conveying information to and within the development team is face-to-face -face communication. When, when we talk about this, face-to-face -face communication gives us a lot of tacit knowledge and information is available you know, for all of us just like that because we are all close by, qualified teams will get information very quickly and uh, that information and also we have the behavioral understanding of the people. Agile processes promote sustain, sorry, working software is the primary measure of progress. It is working software that the customer is looking for, not anything but that. Working software I would say is the goal, like, like in, in a soccer match we, we talk about the goals, right? It is the goals what we are talking about. Rest of the thing called is commentary. Customer is waiting for that working software. Agile process promotes sustainable development, sponsors, developers and use constant pace. This is what we will be talking about when we say we we have teams that are working on the software. So make sure that the teams will not overburn and then ensure that we iteration by iteration we plan it well and make sure that we have the teams understanding the requirements in terms of the say the sprint planning we do sprint reviews we do sprint retrospectives we do so that kind of uh, you know information is what we are talking about here Sustainable development means that we, we make sure that the teams will not overburn, we make sure that the teams would work at a pace so that we, we, we groom the product backlog and other things that are needed for us so that we, we take up those works immediately when they are available.
continuous attention to technical excellence is important so that you know we can enhance the agility what is technical excellence here technical excellence we are talking about the designs understanding the structure of the code and things of that sort that is very important for the team members to focus simplicity the art of maximizing the work not done here what exactly we are talking about is make sure the things are done in a simple way such that we would not be over engineering too much that way you know in other ways simple uh, One second. Sorry. <coughs> Simplicity here, what we are talking is be simple, design should be simple, and simple code that works for now, simple structure that works for now, and then ensure that we will not be doing analysis, paralysis kind of things where, where we spend most of the time for no good reason. That's not a value add for the project. So, uh, we make sure that, uh, you know, for example, Lean talks about uh, defer commitment, postpone things until the last responsible moment. Right? The best architectures and requirements and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. Self-organizing teams will be covering this soon. Self-organizing teams are nothing but teams that they are not depending on the management for instructions, but however they are under the control of the management. At regular intervals, the teams reflect on how to become more effective and then tune, tune and adjust their behavior accordingly. This is what we do part of our retrospective. So every time we make sure that these retrospectives are objectively done and moderated by the Scrum Masters. I'm sorry, somebody. Okay, before we make sure that we transform to agility, We should be clear on few things. What is the current organization culture in my organization? How well is our current culture aligned to Agile? And we need to make sure that we address these if any problems do come here. Okay, let's uh, talk for a minute on what culture is. Uh, 